final home stretch. This is confidence is the key. Miami quarterback Tua Tagalabagala, I can't ever pronounce his name. He's had some issues, and I wanted to talk about those issues with someone that I call Nasty. Jenna, bring on Nasty. Hey, Rubio, how are you doing? Doing well. Sheldon, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, you, okay, it's a Ukrainian name, so you have, so you have to pronounce it as such. It is Nepaschuk or Nepaschuk oh, no. originally. Nepaschuk. My wife always introduced me as Nepas the ball, Chuck the ball. Nepaschuk. Okay, I can no, see that's good. Nepaschuk. I got that. See, that's very easy. I like that as well. Nasty. Before we even get to the meat of this, I just wanted to say. Yet again, and I don't know what you do, but your hair looks phenomenal. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess I just got, I got to thank my grandparents. My my grandpa had the, uh, he, he, my other grandpa was Norwegian and had the long wavy hair. And and uh, yeah, I, I just got his hair, I guess. So yeah. I'm I mean, I, I watch you every Tuesday night from at 930 or 10, whatever time you guys are going. And I always think to myself, don't get me wrong. I have a great shaped head. You do. I love it bald but if i had hair i feel like i would want your style because it always looks like you you kind of got the wind machine going in front of you slash it's the perfect amount of i don't I, gel mousse i don't know what people put on their hair what do you put on that just what kind of clay stuff that my wife picks up from i don't know walmart uh, I'm, I'm not i'm not i'm not a fancy guy in fact i'm wearing my readers and i wear my readers with pride and i have three pairs sitting here and i threw my yellow uh, to honor you and your uh, brand colors tonight, Rubio. Okay, so now would you make fun of me if I had to click at things? No, dude. He, he talk, the last guest was talking about like being a guy. And I think what's sexy about guys is guys that don't care but just get things done. I don't love you, – you love my hair. I don't love the fact that I wear these readers. And I know this. If I look here, you get a glare in my glasses. I hate that. But you know what? They work. I need them to see the notes in front of me, so I'm just going to do it. And – you know, you want to criticize me? No problem. Uh, you think it's great? No problem. Uh, I'm just, I'm just doing me. See, that's because you're oozing confidence, nasty. That you're oozing confidence, and that's why we get along so well. And that's why we get along with Randy, even though he's a disgusting pig on a plane. Which, oh my God, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to talk about it with him because it just makes me, it, it pisses me off. All right, so we're talking about confidence is the key. As you know, we already talked about it. Tua Tagliavoa of the Miami Dolphins. He has had, missed ten, I think it's 10 games in the last two years. I think his concussion is up to, it's got to be five concussions in at least the last three years. Uh, for those that don't know what Tua looks like, Jenna, can you throw up that picture of Tua? And the big thing is now he just got knocked out. And this was probably, well, at this point, four to five weeks ago. And it was his own fault. Ironically, he ran headfirst into DeMar Hamlin, who literally died on the field several years ago. But to it, number one, don't be an idiot, slide. Number two, he's coming back, which I, I honestly thought, okay, this dude's going to retire. There's only so many concussions one can get before you start just scrambling and you're talking like Muhammad Ali at the end. So that's not a good thing. But now... Jenna, can you show up the next pick? He said that he's not going to wear one of these guardian caps. So for those that are listening on iTunes and Spotify, a guardian cap, there's a picture with it right now. It's just your normal helmet. And then just imagine a, a condom on a helmet that's filled with cottage cheese and extra foam is what it looks like. Um, and so he said, I I'm not wearing that personal preference. Nasty, what are your thoughts on this? Because I, I, I go both ways on my thinking for, for what this guy's doing. Yeah, well, that, that and that's that's a great question. Um, so, uh, for those that don't know, I I never played in the NFL. I, I I tore off a pec my last year of college, and I ended up playing in the Canadian Football League for eight years. Um, but I will tell you this: when I look at a guy like Tua, um, you know, I I feel for, him, for to get from where he was at, from a you know, family of multiple children in in, in Hawaii to leading his high school to becoming a you know a four star uh, prospect. His whole life, he had to bet on himself. And more than just betting on himself, he had to believe that he would get there come hell or high water. Um, and, you know, you, you think back to his Alabama days and what it went through just getting that starting job. And then, and then you know, falling back in the draft to number five, granted. Yeah. You know, this is a guy that has been all in on himself and his abilities his, abilities, his entire career. Um, if you ask, I think, any guy from my generation that played – would, would you change anything up if it risked your opportunity? Not so much about the way you looked. My big thing would be if I was throwing a different helmet, would I hit the same? When my when my I was a nose tackle, my head hit under 
uh, the center, center's uh, chin guard, would it pop up the same way or would it cushion the blow? I can't do anything that would cushion the blow. Second of all, I don't believe I'm really going to get hurt. I've seen a lot of guys that have played for a lot of years and have had concussions. You know what? They're fine, right? And so you have this, this feeling of an invincibility that, um, that I'm going to be fine. And further than that, you feel like if I change one thing that I've done from the time I was 10 years old, throwing 30-yard passes in Hawaii when my friends couldn't do it to the point that I went number five in the NFL draft – and that I'm leading, uh, uh, setting records in the NFL as a young player, will I change one thing? I think his biggest fear is that he sells himself out or he'll look at himself differently. And that's, it, and the truth, Chris, is that is true. Mm -hmm. uh, so much of this game is mental, right? Oh, God. But you know what is, is also true? You can really mess yourself up. So you're, you're, you're talking the exact same way I am where you're arguing both points because and my apologies for not, inter I, I got so into just talking that I forgot to introduce a Canadian football legend, monster, six foot five, 285 pounds. We play D line. That's why I'm talking about concussions. Cause we've all obviously all been there, done that. And like you said, though, Tua com comes from the Island of Hawaii, probably started throwing coconuts. He's not a large human being. I think he's about six foot one. He's not your prototypical Tom Brady, six, four, six, five, two. 220 pounds. I mean, he's probably six foot, six foot one, probably 230, 225. And he's had to fight an uphill battle the entire time. And like you said, when we were taught, I, I remember specifically being taught the screws of my face mask were supposed to go underneath the guy's chin. Yeah. That I, mean, I can't even tell you how many times at UCLA, Coach Nunley, who I think just passed, he, he would yell. He had this gravelly voice, and he would say, screws in hands, screws in hands, screws in hands. And that was the whole thing. You get your screws under his chin and your hands on their tits. If you can get screws in hands, that was the number one thing. And, and that's not just attitude. That's physics. 100%. Right? That's the way the game was designed to be played. Um, and, and quarterbacks also know when – uh, to get those extra yards, there's times when I have to lay out and I have to take the hit. I'll tell you, every quarterback that grew up in our generation uh, paid some horrible prices to make sure they got the first down and kept the kept the chains moving. Uh, he's a throwback guy. But, the, but back to the point again is it takes that mindset to come from a family of four or five boys on the island of Hawaii to being the biggest new thing in the NFL. It takes that commitment and that obsession. Uh, but there's a price that's going to be paid. Is that price worth it, Rubio? Well, I'll tell you what. When you're a young man, what is he, 26, 25? Yeah, very young. He, he's a young guy. And at this point, all he wants to do is fulfill the dream that he had. Now, all of us were young and, and, and dumb at one point in your life where we do that. That's where you see a lot of abuses to your body, overtraining, drugs, all, like all the stuff that you, you would see that comes as a byproduct of wanting to make it to the best league in the world. Um. And unfortunately, I don't think anybody can change his mind. Like his mom's not going to change his mind. All right, mom, mom, I'm fine. His wife, hey, the reason you love me is because I go after this stuff. My belief is it's not until you have kids mm -hmm. that you start thinking about your mortality. Because um, this guy right now at this point in his life, you know, what was that statement I saw him make last night? I love football to the death of me. Yeah. He will, he will not stop until – he achieves every dream he has. As big of a star as he is, do you think he feels like a star right now? Well, and, and, and there's there's also the old adage where you never want to hear, you, you never want to say to yourself, what if? Because yeah. like, you know, the whole, what, what if I had done more? What if I, but uh, to play devil's advocate, you could say it both ways on this one. Like, what if I did wear the guardian cap? I would be able to play for another five years or, you know, or if I say he does retire, what, what if I didn't retire and I go out there? Okay. Or what if I didn't retire and I go play and I get knocked out. But at this point, I, AC of AC sports live was talking about it last night. I would have to assume there's going to be a almost a permanent red jersey on him from defenders. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be some crazy asses that want to take him out. But he's coming down through the line. There's not going to be very many people that are going to lower their head and try to go at him. They're going to be like, let me grab you like a flag football and throw you down gently. Because I think is not the last concussion, but the one before it. Where he got whipped around. Well, it's not even. Yeah, he got up. He was all cockeyed. Yeah. But with the onslaught of turf, people don't understand that most 
concussions come when a kid gets tackled and then boom, their head hits like that and it hits on the turf. And even now that it's softer turf, I'm sure back in the day you played on the same type of turf that I did. It was like fifth grade school carpet. With that a old, layer. Yeah, the old Astro turf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And so, but, but Rubio, that's, that's where I think that the crux of this comes. I'm not glorifying that mindset. I'm saying all young guys that make it have that mindset. Um, and, and I think for, for the, but the second you have kids, you start mm -hmm. thinking about, I need to be there in two years and five years. It changes everything about your approach to the game. Um, so what I'm saying is I think if we're going to see real effectual change, I would love to see him in either a guardian helmet. I know he's actually agreed to switch to a helmet that's got that softer material, the mm -hmm. best helmet that's been designed for quarterbacks for concussions. But it's not until we see the league come down and mandate this that players are going to adopt it, unfortunately. I, I'm 50. I'm 50. I would love to see players protect their heads. I wish somebody would have had me protect my head. Um, but the truth is in the 1970s, in the 80s in the nhl national a canadian guy going to talk about the nhl guys didn't wear helmets yeah Rubio, in the 60s goalies didn't wear masks yeah that's they actually insane. had to make they had to make a decision if that puck's coming at me at this speed i think i can block it with my head right you know you think about it and some guys would have for the for the stanley cup or playing against those great series against russia back in the days right Although um, they were probably hoping that the puck hit him in the mouth so they'd get a broken jaw so they wouldn't have to eat poutine <laughs> dude I, I, i'll tell you i agree with a lot that you have to say chris but uh when it comes to poutine you and i i mean we're on opposite ends of the spectrum i love poutine same reason i, I love you. turkey i love that gravy okay so you're 25 year old 26 year old tua what are you doing you've got no kids you're, you are married you've got no kids and, yeah, and you're well, young and stupid. You don't you you don't know what fifty year old nasty knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's going to do what he's doing now. The teams come down hard enough on him. They've been mandating. They're not mandating him. They've been pushing him. Uh, he's agreed to take on a helmet he's never worn before. And trust me, even changing your equipment is a real mind. It just messes oh, yeah. with your mind, right? Um, but he's agreed to do that, and I hope he sticks with it. Um, the other thing I think is this guardian. This guardian cap is just the start of it. Uh, we're addressing the issue. We've recognized the issue. We're addressing it. Yeah, it looks a little funny. I, I probably wouldn't have thrown it on either at that age. But right now, it, you know, if I went back, I'd be wearing it every single day. Um, it may take the uh, it may take the league mandating a new system. And and you know, the funny thing about this Rubio is as goofy as people think it looks. Five years from today, when they address this problem and it's league wide, um, it'll be the same as the NHL guys in the seventies that never wore helmets. It will yeah. look archaic to not have to play this game and not have proper headgear on. Well, and I think, I think it's all fine and dandy, but I think if the NFL was truly, truly, truly interested in slowing the concussion rate down, they would do exactly what soccer does. Soccer, when they come over here to play friendlies, soccer, the big premier leagues, they do not play on turf. They will mandate that they play on only grass. So if concussions are that big of a deal, you can keep wearing these helmets that look like Jack in the Box head, or you know you could just say, hey, let's remove all the turf, which they're never going to do because the quote unquote cost is too high. Okay, and it looks pretty, it looks a lot prettier than grass, obviously, but it's one of those things. I guarantee, if someone did a study, I I would bet seventy percent of the concussions occur because of that damn turf. You know what? That that's int that's an interesting point, but. Playing, playing on the new field turf and different generations that over the years, I prefer it to grass because, you know, you're probably right. It's a head contact. Now, for me, I never got tackled backwards. I never yeah. hit my head on the back of the turf. It's always, you know, direct hits or side hits. Um, but field turf comes with knee injuries. Or, I'm sorry, oh. grass comes with knee injuries. It's an imperfect surface. When you're – I was at nose tackle. Double played every t every every play, right? You're swimming. You're trying to split through a gap, and you're twisting your hips. And, and grass was uh, grass was horrible. Yeah, you know, from, from a guy that played my position, not horrible, but you weren't as fast. You weren't as quick as you could have been. Yeah, yeah. It. But, but you know, I think you're onto something that we've got to look at this from a holistic approach. Surface, he headgear, footgear, rules, and they've done a great job in terms of back when back when we played. You're still allowed three steps before hitting the quarterback, right? As long as he's sort of somewhat in the motion, you got away with a late hit. They've done some good things to change it, but you know what? Maybe grass would be an answer. I it definitely does cushion the blow when you land 100%.
Oh yeah, hundred percent. Well, I mean, when I was at UCLA, the rule didn't change until I think my senior year, where as a long snapper, they were allowed to line up on me yeah. and hit me before I moved my head. So, I mean, that's why I had my back problems because they were just, as soon as I snapped it, boom. And then the first two plays of the game, whenever I went in, they would line up the two biggest, nastiest human beings just to destroy me. And they realized that they did it on purpose to be an intimidation factor. And if I submitted, like if I was scared, they got me. But my thought was they're going to hit me regardless. So I might as well make a good snap. And so if I did the first two perfect, which of course they were, they would just go to the A gaps because there was no point. Why, why waste your guy trying to go over the number 64? Because you're just wasting a spot. Just go to the gaps and try to sneak through there. So, I mean, things do evolve. Things change. I would be willing to bet, what is it, 2024? By 2035, I bet, like you said, either the helmets are drastically different or the guardian cap is just a normal thing. Um, and you know, the rules, they keep changing. I don't want them to change too much simply because yeah. it, it is football. You, you know, though, but, but like, so from guys that came and I, I'm, you know, I got 10 years on you, uh, but the things we used to get away with from hitting quarterbacks, even when you tackle them and you, you know, you arch your body. So when you land on them, that it's all in their rib cage, like stuff right now, when I, when I look back to that stuff, it's it a horrible, it was stupid. Like, <laughs> like the game of football back then was stupid, yeah, um, was but, but we didn't know each other in 2007 you know, Facebook and all that stuff was just kind of coming out. So you didn't know the guy as well as you know him today. Um, but I, I, I promise, or I, what I was going to say is now you look at the rules that protect quarterbacks. You know what? Guys can lay off quarterbacks. You can dead fish the second the ball comes out of his hands. It made the game better and it made the game safer. But to your point, there's more concussions than there ever has been before. And I don't know why. Something does have to be, they got to figure it out and they got to make a change. I would agree with you, Nasty. I appreciate you coming on. You guys can watch The Ride with Chevy and Nasty, uh, 9.30 or 10 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays. Make sure you follow them. It's a great, great show. It talks about – I can't even tell you what it talks about because it goes all over the damn place. Stuff. They can be, yeah, they just stuff. Guys, stuff. And it, Nasty is the cleaner – more polite, more couth human being on an airplane because he does not take his shoes off like Chevy does and does not bring in teriyaki subs and reclines. And I don't put my seat back into the guy's lap behind me because that's just rude. That's just, yeah, it's, it's beyond rude. N Nasty, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.